Okay, I'm um, are we ready? Okay. Um, is there anybody who don't understand German? Then I would uh, take the talk in English, otherwise I would take the talk in German. So, okay. Um, then I will do uh, the talk in uh, English. I don't know who of you has read the newspapers yesterday, but there was a, a, a big headline that Lance Armstrong lost uh, seven of his Tour de France titles. And uh, it was uh, the case Lance Armstrong versus uh, US anti-drug agency. And now you say, so what? What has it to do with Eclipse RCP? What has it to do with uh, um, CSI New York or something like that? And I think more than you could imagine at this moment. And I would like to give you a short impression, a short overview of the techniques uh, possible still in this area today. And if you, if you have, an, uh, have a further look on, on the investigation, so you have a blood sample for example, from Lance Armstrong. But how can you detect the drugs in this blood? So there are several techniques to do it. So you can um, go in with uh, different chemical methods, but you can also use a technique called LC. It's uh, called liquid chromatography. And with liquid chromatography, you can separate the blood and, uh, and, um, and the drugs he has, has taken in one step. At the end of the system is a mass spectrometer. Um, I don't know if, uh, do you heard from a mass spectrometer before? Maybe not? Okay, it's a, it's a, very, it's a very fancy technique to detect uh, different substances. So if there's a drug in there, I can detect it and I can reveal it. And that's uh, what's, it's pretty cool. But uh, my talk is about, I have to start my time. Um, my talk is about uh, the problems that are um, evident in the software used today. And the problems are that the software is from the 90s of the last century. And uh, really, it's crappy. It's, it's awful. It's something like that. I've worked with it, and uh, I've done my PhD at the University of Hamburg uh, with, with the software. And I was upset, definitely upset because uh, you can't do the analysis you want to do. You can't perform the data you would like to perform. You can't access the data. So it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a crappy software and um, the, the companies are not really willing to change it because um, they have an oligopol nearby and so what? The user don't care. The problem is the software in this case. And um, I don't know if you know him. Somebody of you looks this serious like uh, CSI New York and some, some other stuff. So McTaylor would say, dude, it's like analyzing your data with a sledgehammer. And it is. It's definitely crappy. And uh, you, it's yeah, very hard to, to um, extract the information you really would like to have. And I will give you a short uh, or a screenshot <laughs> in, this, uh, um, in this slide of how the software looks like. So it uh, was, it's, it's, um, was initially um, developed under the Pascal, uh, Pascal uh, Camp Station, so a Pascal workstation on Harpy Ux. And so you have a main window, you have your chromatogram. I will go into further details um, um, in the ongoing presentation. But um, yeah, it looks okay, but it's not really nice. And the question is, uh, can't we do it better? And a famous person uh, would say, um, maybe you know him, actually, uh, he would say, Eclipse develops, yes, you can. You can do it better because we have a good platform and we have a modular platform. And the, the only missing gap is to do the programming. And um, that was also what was I, what I thought uh, when programming uh, the software, I will uh, give you an introduction to it, it's called Open Chrome, is um, that we can uh, utilize the Eclipse RCP platform to do such evaluations. And if Obama says, yes, you can do it better, we can really do it better. And we not only can do it better, we have done it better and we will do better in the future. And that's a screenshot of the software Open Chrome. 
um, which I would like to give you a further introduction to. And as a first uh, screenshot, you see, okay, it's much more clearer. You have a much more better um, overview over your data. And as we are here on the uh, on the programming uh, uh, programming conference and not on the chemistry conference, I will go into further details how all the parts and how all the uh, different views are implemented. But thanks. But I um, can't, can't give you an introduction into the topic without um, yeah, telling a little bit uh, about chemistry. So normally people love chemistry or people hate chemistry. So who of you love chemistry? Okay. <laughs> uh, a, a lot of people hate chemistry, sure. Um, um, I don't know why, it's, uh, chemistry is lovely. Uh, it's maybe like mathematics <laughs> or uh, some, something else. And um, yeah, for example, analytical chemistry is one part of the, of the chemistry area. And what can we do? It's, it's a widespread technique. It's used for genomics. It's used for quality management. It's used for quality assurance in companies. Most commonly, it's used for research and development. Sure. And it's used for forensics, uh, so it has a very, very strong impact in the forensic area. And um, I would give you an overview of a, such a machine. That's a machine called um, Pyrolysis GCMS. It's uh, called Analytical uh, Pyrolysis. This is this part here coupled to a gas chromatograph where your, where your substance or where your probe is separated into different uh, small parts. And then you have a detector, it's called a mass spectrometer, where you uh, define which molecules are arriving here at my mass spectrometer at time. And um, yeah, the, the machine looks uh, crappy, but it's really expensive, costs around about half a million. Um, it's very cool, you need only a few micrograms. So um, a few micrograms is uh, just um, a fuzzle here, not more. So it's a very small sample amounts. You have an easy preparation, it's very sensitive, and it's very fast. But the problem is that we didn't have the software to evaluate all the, or the huge amount of data files. And for that, I would like to give you a more handy example um, um, of today. So what you see here is um, a, a paper production. This is a paper tambour. Um, it, its weight is around um, several tons. And uh, so um, such a paper uh, production lines do produce each day uh, several tons to 100 tons of paper. So one, one paper mill is uh, producing a year around about 500,000 tons uh, of paper or of cellulose. And that's pretty much. But they have the problem that sometimes there are spots on the paper, as you see here, one C, one B, and one A. And nobody knows where do they come from. And if they do not know where they come from, it wouldn't be the problem. But the, the problematic thing about it is that sometimes uh, um, the, the paper production stops because the, the paper rolls are crilling and the paper, um, I don't know how the German, how the English word is, uh, flews off. And uh, they have serious problems and it costs very much. And in paper production, we have several additives. For example, Seva Vision Vec. It, it, it doesn't uh, go off if you uh, dip it into water because we have. Um, so-called NASFEST middle in it, or ketene, ketene dimere, and so on. But what you see here is that we only have small sample amounts, and, um, and those problems occur also in, in printing processes, so in offset printing, that uh, the printer says, okay, your, your product doesn't work. The problem was how to analyze such few samples, and Paralysis GCMS was able to analyze this due to its ability to measure a few micrograms. And I will show you the results in a live demo where I can, uh, where, I will, where I've measured all the additives, where I've measured the paper, where I've measured the spots, and where I came to the conclusion 
uh, what was the problem with the sports. And that I would like to give you in a, a live demo of Open Chrome. Sure, 20 minutes are, um, are not enough, but um, as you see here, we have our workbench of um, Open Chrome, this is our file explorer. And there are different system vendors. So, for example, HLand has a format of D file, then there are Shimatsu, then there are Varian files, and so on, binary data files, which I'm able to read with Open Chrome. I uh, um, decoded them with the hex editor and so on. It was a funny work, but um, yeah, it took some time, but now it's working. And as you see here, we have, for example, um, um, a sample. You see in the editor where we have a time domain. It's from the chromatograph who separates my sample. It's an intensity. And if I zoom in, for example, here, we have several peaks. And if we just mark a peak here, we see a mass spectrum. It's here from 68, 67, that are ions. And from this mass spectrum, I can determine uh, the molecule of each peak. And the question was, can I use this uh, peak pattern of the chromatograms to store in a database to reveal unknown samples? And as we have the label L2, the labels have been used in the paper production process to mark the tambour. So uh, one label says, OK, this tambour goes to the printing process. This uh, tambour goes to the cutting process. And um, after they uh, gone there, they are, uh, yeah, they will be rejected to the paper production, and will be part of the uh, cycling process of the paper uh, of the paper mill. And um, this are label two. There's a label one. You see here a lot of more, lot more peaks. There's a label number three. And so on. So you have uh, have a lot of data, and what I've done to store all these um, uh, these patterns in the database. So I still have created the database. It's, it took some time, but what we can do now is to analyze such a spot. So for example, if I have a spot um, here, spot number one. Um, First, I have to detect the peaks. So as you see here, Open Chrome is, um, is programmed very modularly. So um, you can uh, implement a new peak detector or implement a new filter to optimize your data or so on. It depends on what you like to do. So uh, we apply a standard peak detector on the data. And if we zoom in, you see, OK, we have a lot of peaks in this area. And um, we can. Uh, or we must integrate the peaks afterwards. So it's also very modular. And what we can do now is to ask the database, please identify this chromatogram. And I have done it before. It took me around about one and a half weeks uh, to do one uh, examination, because you have to go to each peak, uh, compare each mass spectrum for each peak. If I go here, we have another mass spectrum than here, and so on. So it was very, very strenuous to do it. And I've um, started programming Open Chrome in 2008. And now I'm able to go here and say, please identify my chromatogram. And what he does now is he goes through each peak, uh, checks against the database I've created, and calculates a result um, of which my substance maybe uh, is composed of. And now it took around about yeah, half a minute, what took before one and a half weeks. So it's, um, I, yeah, it was nice for me um, to do it. And what we see now, we have uh, several peaks. Some have been deleted who couldn't be identified. And I can see here, OK, paper, paper is sure, paper is part of the production process. But there are a lot of um, peaks from the label L2. And um, with 87% roundabout. And that led me to the conclusion that maybe the label L2 was part of the problem of the paper process. And I told the company, please remove the label L2 from your process, and then you will probably have no, no problem in your process anymore. And they didn't have a problem anymore. So it was a nice um, 
evaluation to do uh, or to use Open Chrome in such a case, but you can use it also in other cases. What we see here, we have a lot of different views and uh, we can, for example, compare chromatograms in an overlay mode. Um, just clicking in, go to the right or go to the left, so you see, okay, we have a peak which arises from two of the chromatograms but not from the others and so on. Or we can go back to the default perspective and um, create a chromatogram heat map which shows me if uh, there are artifacts in the, in the uh, recording process or so on. So I have a, a, a huge flexibility in, um, in using such a software. But, um, where's my... Exactly. Um, and that was the result. We have um, these bots containing a lot of uh, the labels L2 and L4. And as I told the company to remove these labels, uh, they had no problem anymore. But we are on a, uh, on a programming conference, not on a um, chemical conference. And I would like to give you a short um, um, example or a short overview over the plugins I've used to implement Open Chrome. So one of my favorite, um, um, one of my favorite libraries is the SVT chart library. So you have a huge, um, a huge amount of different charts. You have bar charts, you have line charts, you have um, yeah, all the stuff you like to show. So as you have seen the chromatogram in the editor area, it was uh, derived from uh, SVT chart. Or you see the mass spectrum, it was part of SVT chart. So you are, it's, it's lightweight and it's extensible and you can um, adapt it uh, to your needs. So very, very flexible. I really recommend it to use it. Here's the web address, SWT chart. I don't know if you still have, uh, still you know SWT chart? Okay, now you know. It's, it's great. Please have a look at it. That was used to display the peaks. Another library um, was uh, SWXH uh, uh, graph. And it was to display the chromatogram heat map, so to, to detect artifacts, to detect uh, yeah, different kind of traces and so on. And it just took me one day to implement it for Open Chrome. So it's also a very brilliant library and it's a very good library to visualize your data. And I really recommend it. It's a public license under the EPL. So it's uh, very flexible to use. It has also progress bar, it has sliders and so on. So um, really would really recommend it. And the next library, it's my, my favorite one. Um, it's called um, OrientDB. Um, OrientDB is a, a, a no SQL database and uh, it works embedded. So the problem before was I couldn't tell my users, so um, yeah, please install a MongoDB and then connect to your command line and then do that and do that. So um, it's not feasible to do that. OrientDB, um, uh, it's um, I think developed from, from um, 1996, something about that, 1997. It's, uh, it's a very lightweight uh, NoSQL database and you can use it, for example, in different uh, kind, uh, kind of Modi, for example, as a key value store or as a uh, document store. It uh, stores JSON documents. That's what I have used to store my chromatograms. It's used as an object relational mapper and it uh, can be used as a graph database. And it's pretty cool because with uh, the OrientDB, I'm able to store all my chromatographic data and um, I can shortly go back to the um, application and show you uh, such a nice feature. I'm able to store JSON documents. I'm also able to store binary documents and um, that makes it possible, what you see here, um, to um, uh, load chromatograms. For example, if I want to compare um, the label number four, I can say load chromatogram and now the binary file will be fetched from the database and be loaded in Open Chrome as you see it here. Or if we can, 
if we still open another chromatogram, uh, let's take this one. I would take, um, I would detect the peaks. I would like to integrate them. And preliminarily, I have to check the, um, the database settings. It's um, here. And I can say store the raw chromatograms. OK, apply. And now I'm able to add this chromatogram to the database I showed before. I simply go to the add. I have to give a name, let's say um, ECE 2012. And now all the peaks are, will be stored in, in, in the database. And the raw file will be stored in the database as a, a binary large object too. And that's pretty fine because um, after two or three weeks, I would uh, like to see which chromatogram do I have used for this uh, database. And as we go back here, we may close it. Um, we see now that it appears here. And we say, OK, yes, the raw is stored. And we still can load it into the editor again. So OrientDB, I really recommend for the users in their own application, because it's very lightweight. It's, uh, it's programmed in Java. It's uh, embedded. And it's very uh, simple to use. But there are other great libraries which uh, I have utilized to program OpenCrom. So that's, for example, Apache command line interface plugin or the Apache POI. It's uh, for creating uh, Excel documents or for accessing only two uh, um, uh, storages and so on. Also a great library. Apache Commons Math library, also very great. Um, or the PDF chat library. It's, um, it's a license under a very liberal um, open source license. Uh, there's also another package called iText, great library too, but it's, it's licensed under the AGPL, which uh, doesn't allow me to bundle it with open Chrome, so I just took PDF chat to create PDF files. There's a groovy integration, and um, there's super CS uh, Wii to create uh, text files, CSV files for output and input. So we're great libraries. But in, at all, um, I think um, I'm standing on, on shoulders of uh, giants because all you Eclipse people have made it possible uh, to build such an application as Open Chrome. And without the open sourceness and without the community, it, wouldn't be, uh, it couldn't be done to program such, uh, such an, an application. So my thanks is to all Eclipse developers, Eclipse developers, to all open source developers, and uh, all helping hands and contributors. So also to all the Apache people who are creating really, really <laughs> nice libraries. And yeah, that um, was, I'm, I'm, I think I'm at the end of my talk. So are there any um, um, questions of you? Yeah. How much is your data input to analyze measure data with this API? Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of complex algorithm, that means yeah. you just do simple calculations. Yeah. Um, Um, I would say equal to native systems. Okay, if you have uh, ahead of time compilation like C or C++, sure, it's a little bit faster, but um, you have so much uh, power of your computers today and so much RAM, so it, um, yeah, you don't have to care about it. And I had uh, chromatograms, or so I have a batch processor in, in OpenChrom where I processed thousands of chromatograms. Uh, it took uh, four to five hours, and it went fine, so um, you don't have to care about it. There are other questions? Yeah. 
That's, uh, that's a very important issue because um, as I'm, um, uh, I'm also working with the software for the analysis, so I'm still see where, where, um, where the performance is going down. And that's all, and mostly all of the times if you are accessing the GOI thread and then have a sync and do not do it in an async uh, method and so on. And, uh, but um, I think uh, there will be some further developments in the future to push it uh, or to make it more faster than today. Um, but as I use it for my own, so um, I try to improve it every time I see a bug or where, it's, where the performance is going down. Yeah, it's, uh, it's much more better than the software uh, actually uh, used in this area. So, um, but it needs some improvement, sure. Yeah. Okay, I think the next one uh, will start in a few minutes. Uh, what I would like to invite you is um, to come tonight. There's a science industry working group, or we would like to share our ideas with um, several corporations. And it's starting at 8 o'clock. So please uh, join it, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>